Hello BookTube. I have a little bit of mail for you today. We just had one package yesterday. We've got two today, but they're not today's mail. They came late last night. Long after I was paying attention, I'm assuming my surly houseboy got them uh, first thing this morning. Uh, they certainly didn't come today, <laughs> because I don't think I'm going to get mail today. It's snowing like crazy outside, and it's... It has been fluffy snow, but now it's starting to become wet and heavy snow, slushy snow, and that makes for treacherous footing. I'd be willing to bet that no mail delivery people will deliver mail today. Even though it's no longer a federal holiday, I'm sure I'm pretty sure that they'll just skip it. Uh, so two packages are going to have to do, but we don't have to have 40 minutes per video. I did a 40-minute video today, an interview with Dennis Romano, which is that was a lot of fun. You'll see it in today's Steve Barrage. I strongly recommend not only that you watch the video, but that you buy his book. <laughs> All the, the million of you have asked me questions about histories of Venice. Well, you have uh, you have an option now. <laughs> but uh, let's look at the packages uh, and see what we have. We have just two, and then we'll be done. Uh, so what are we getting in the midst of a snowstorm? The, surely the one and only snowstorm that Boston will get this year. Surely that will be true. Uh I don't know what I'm going to do with the bean. She doesn't particularly like this sort of thing. <laughs> so so I, she's got to go out in it. I, it looks like probably a, an inch or two. Uh, which doesn't sound like much, but that's that's a third of her height. So, <laughs> so I, we'll see. She'll probably, she'll probably uh, grin and bear it, at least for a bit. Uh, oh, great. Okay. This is James Holland, uh, the prolific historian James Holland. This is Burma 44. The battle that turned World War II in the East. How lovely. Here, let's put this on the right side so we're not getting Star Trek shadows there. Uh, first published, for the first time in the United States, Grove Atlantic will be publishing this book. Second leading backlist title in the UK. All right, what's that all about? Let's take a little look-see. 2016. This came out in 2016. Okay. Uh, this, this is the second leading backlist title in the UK. And it offers a dramatic tale of victory against incredible odds. Holland chronicles the astonishing Allied victory in the, at the Battle of the Admin Box in Burma, now Myanmar. <laughs> How many of you are thinking of Seinfeld right now? <laughs> and turning point in the War of the Far East. In February 1944, one of the most astonishing battles of World War II took place. A ragtag collection of British clerks, drivers, doctors, muleteers, and other basic troops, stiffened by a few dogged Yorkshiremen and a handful of tank crews, managed to defeat a much larger and sophisticated contingent of some of the finest infantry in the Japanese army on their march towards India. Okay, well, uh, so this is now out in America. I guess it's been out in the UK for a long time. I will probably just uh, send this to David Murphy. Uh, he's a big fan of this author, I believe. Uh, so this comes out in June. This is this is out in June. Oh, so maybe I won't. Maybe I won't send this to David. Maybe I'll send him. I'll wait and get the finished copy to send to him instead of this thing, unless he wants to write about it. But anyway, World War II history now in America. This is this has been out in the UK. So that's one package. World War II history can't go wrong there. Uh, now we'll do this other package, and then I will have to figure out what I'm going to do <laughs> with the bean. It is snowing and sleeting outside. I didn't expect that to happen again in this Milankovitch cycle. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen again in Boston for another 20,000 years, something like that, at which point Frida would be too old to go for walks. But it is snowing. I don't believe it will snow again in the in 2024, but I'm going to have to figure out. She's barely ever encountered snow. It's just we don't get weather like this anymore. I'll figure it out. She'll walk. She's pretty hardy. <laughs> She'll walk around at least a bit. Uh, so what is this next one? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so World War II history. We're getting World War II history for June, and then also for June, we're getting another Steve book. There are only two books here, but boy, oh boy, two bullseyes. Uh, this is by Nicholas Jenkins, and it's called The Island, War and Belonging in Auden's England. I don't know if you can see uh, behind me. Can you see behind me? Yeah, there we go. Up there by the shark. Tons of Auden. I've spent the last couple of years coming to grips with Auden in a very good way, in a very positive way. I've been lo I loved it. Absolutely. I still do it. But 
for the longest time, you could probably guess my reaction to Auden. For the longest time, I thought, eh, that's not poetry, or that's not very good poetry, or I don't really get that. But I love his nonfiction. I love his forwards and addresses and prefaces and whatnot. They're always collected, and I love those. Keep going back to those. And then I decided to take down the collected poems, that big volume by the shark snout up there, uh, and really live with it. Really, really live with it. I, I, I One too many first-class readers that I know just constantly expressing their admiration, long-term, lifetime admiration for Auden. I, one too many of those, and I just decided, okay, you can't ignore this anymore. You're just wrong about this guy. You have to be. So give it time and do a lot of ancillary reading. I, re, I read and reread Mendelssohn on Auden, uh, and it worked. It worked. I can't 100% say that it's in the process of working for Philip Larkin. I'm not 100% sure that it's in the process of happening for Larkin. And it could be only just as simple a thing as that I don't have a really, that that, that big collective verse of Aud, of Larkin. I don't have that volume. And maybe that's it. Because with Auden, I didn't I didn't start with the Mendelssohn and the, the essays and prefaces and whatnot. I started with the poems and moved outward, the reverse of my usual approach. Um, and I'm wondering if I need to do that with Larkin, too. I mean, Larkin is, oh, for instance, there's a there's another book that you can probably see. It's somewhere in the background there. Uh, Inside Story by Martin Amos, his last book. Uh, and Larkin is all over that book. Oh, my God. He is, Amos and all of his contemporaries quote and reference scenes, phrases, images, concepts from Larkin in the way that <laughs> that I would quote from completely earlier authors. <laughs> it's just, it just astonishing. It might have been that that tipped things over years ago when I read that for the first time, that book for the first time. I don't know what it was. Probably a, a confluence of a bunch of different people. But I don't have the volume that I want. I don't have the one that, that needs to start things off. I have uh, biographies of Larkin, but I need the big hardcover collected verse. I don't, I don't have that. But Auden? Not only did it work with Auden, not, not only am I now an Auden fan, but I'm now infinitely interested in reading any book on the subject. And here we have one, a nice big book. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Did you give me a sheet? These folks at Harvard University Press, I swear, a $10 billion endowment, you can't put a sheet in your book. But we'll, let's read the back. We'll, this will be on the dust jacket of the book. Uh so what is this? Oh, of course, it has a blurb from Edward Mendelssohn. Uh, a groundbreaking reassessment of Auden's early life and poetry, shedding new light on his artistic development, as well as on his shifting beliefs about political belonging in interwar Europe, interwar, interwar England. From his first poem in 1922 to the publication of his landmark collection On This Island in the mid-30s, Auden wrestled with the meaning of Englishness. His early works are prized for their psychological depth, yet the author argues here that they are political poems as well, illuminating Auden's intuitions about a key aspect of modern experience, national identity. Two historical forces in particular haunted the poet, the catastrophe of World War I and the subsequent rediscovery of England's rural landscape by artists and intellectuals. This book presents a new picture of Auden, the poet and the man, as he explored a genteel, lyrical form of nationalism during these years. His poems reflect on a world in ruins, while cultivating visions of England as a beautiful, if morally compromised, haven. They also reflect aspects of Auden's personal search for belonging, from his complex relationship with his father, to his quest for literary mentors, to his negotiation of the codes that structured gay life. Yet as Europe veered toward a second immolation, Auden began to realize that poetic myths centered on English identity held little potential. He left the country in 1936 for what became an almost lifelong expatriation. Convinced that his role as the voice of Englishness had become an empty one. Boy, oh boy, whoever wrote this cover copy really earned their keep for the week. This, that's terrifically done. Re-examining one of the 20th century's most moving and controversial poets, the Island is a fresh account of his early works as a striking parable about the politics of modernism. <laughs> all right, well, I don't know. I don't make any great claims for my, uh, for my own reading. I don't know if all of that reading and uh, spending years, a couple of years, living with Auden's verse, living with it, breathing it, letting it breathe in me instead of doing the reviewer rush through it. I don't know if that positions me to be in any better ground to review this book, but I certainly feel like I'm coming home to review this. I don't, if you, if you gave me a book like this about 
Who? Uh, what 20th century poet? Okay, we have a hard time coming up with them. For one reason or another, I'm, I'm fairly up on my 20th century major poets. I'm trying to think of one. I almost said Allen Ginsberg, but I know everything there is to know. About. I never miss a book about Ginsberg. Uh, well, you know what I mean. I mean, read a dove. If, you can, if there were a book like this about read a dove, I, wouldn't, I would feel like a stranger. I'm knocking on the door. I wouldn't have, I would feel like I should probably try to find somebody to review it. I don't feel that way about this. Not with this poet. Maybe that's unjustified, but I spent a long time reading his poetry and ruminating on it, letting it breathe, reading it back to myself on dog walks in summer and, and you know, blowing fall winds and also reading everything about him and rereading and annotating everything about him. So this feels natural, very natural, wonderful. Fantastic. Okay, a study of Auden. Great. All right, so we have an Auden book and a World War II book. That is our mail for today. Two June things, so a long time in the future. We've finished copies of both of these, but I'm glad to have both of them. They don't go on the immediate read or the immediate write pile, uh, which is where I like to have lots of activity. I like to have lots of activity in the immediate read and immediate write department. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of book reviews this year. I plan on doing a huge amount of book reviews this year. And also, I've been good about Goodreads. Partially. I'm not weighing in. I'm not really involved in the community yet over there, but at least I'm not ignoring it. I post on Goodreads a lot of the reviews that I do of the stuff that I read. I should post everything, even if I don't write a full-length review. I should still do a couple of paragraphs on Goodreads for everything. I really need to do that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll work on that today since it's blazing down snow. It's not like the Bean and I are going to be out all day long. Maybe I'll do some of that today. Uh, but if if you want to you know befriend me on Goodreads, that you can get you can get synopses of the reviews that I write, and then I link to the full length review for everything that I'm doing over there. As opposed to not doing that at all, I consider that uh, an improvement. I'm also uh, flogging these reviews on uh, Twitter. One thing I'm not doing is flogging my book reviews on Instagram. I'm not sure that I know how to do that, uh, but maybe I should look into that as well, just so that. And if I write a full-length review of a book, I want everybody who is a member of my readership to know that. I don't think that's wrong. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's part and parcel of writing in the 21st century. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the mail for today. World War II and Auden. Once upon a time, for a long time, I would have thought, well, that was a hit and a miss. Not anymore. I'll take anything about Auden now. Anything. Uh, so that is great. Next up. Larkin. <laughs> but that's, that's not proving quite so easy. And I don't know why that is. I think it's pretty easy to tell uh, just on the surface of Larkin's poetry that it, in its own way, naturally, as a, as a fan of Pope and Dryden, I, uh, there's a part of me that looks at this stuff and says, this isn't poetry at all. This has no structure whatsoever. Okay, fine. But if we, if we leave that aside, if we leave that aside, I think it's obvious that Larkin is every bit as brilliant as Auden. There's just some register, some tonal register that's not, it's not working on me the way Auden did, even when I didn't like him. But I feel like it can't. So, <laughs> but anyway, we're not talking about Larkin, thank God. We're talking about Auden, who I, I, I am, I feel, I feel like I'm coming home with a book like this, and that's great. Uh, so there you go. That is a little bit of a digressy mail haul on a snowy day, a snowy Tuesday. I'm sure that tomorrow it'll be 70 degrees and all this will be gone. But today it feels like a callback to an, uh, a bygone New England. A New England has not made an appearance here for 10 years. Uh, so that's that's fun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, don't miss that interview with Dennis Romano. That was a lot of fun. A lot of you were on me to do more interviews. And I agree. It's not like you need to push me. It's not like something I don't like. <laughs> I love interviewing people. I really need to do that. When... I get publicity sheets for these things. I need to go to the publicist and say any chance that the author wants to talk to me. I, I have a small YouTube channel. I have a small reviewing outlet. That's a good chance they'll say no. Uh, but if they say yes, well, we'll have a ball. <laughs> Today's conversation proves. So I, I, will, I will be better. I will try to be better. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.